All right, I'm going to go over two more problems in this video. The first one that I want to go over is number 10. And the second one is number, let me see, number 14. I, I want to go over all of them. But if you want to email me anything specific, I'll make sure to go over those today. Okay. All right. Um, number 10 first. Let me open up my tablet and go over that. Number 10. Ah, okay. All right. So for this problem, um, I do want you to look at section 2.6 and let's go and write down a formula that will be useful for us, okay? There is a theorem, because, all right, hold on, let me go and take a look at this. F of X is a product, okay? Can you see that F of X is a multiplication of X to the sixth power? And then this log expression, right? And that's log base five. Um, so, um, you know how to differentiate x to the sixth power. That's just going to be six x to the fifth power. But this green part, that's new to us, this chapter. So that's why I wanted to go and write down the theorem with you to differentiate this. And we'll come back and put this together, okay? Um, I was checking. Uh, some students work on these practice problem and one student did this very in an interesting way like he rewrote this using the change of change of base formula rewrote this as natural log of 2x minus x to the third divided by natural log of 5 i like that very much but i remember seeing in section 2.6 that there is a theorem that tells us how to differentiate this log with base other than e base 5 so I want to look that up with you, and then we'll use that together, okay? So give me one second. Let me go to my lab, my math lab, open up the e-text. 261. And this is in section 26. That's the last section of this chapter. So 2.6, we open it up. And... um should be covered in the second part of 2.6. Let me go to the, let me go find the theorem for you. Not this, this is an exponential term with a base A. Where are you? Oh, here it is. Here it is, look. Theorem number 13 says, if you want to differentiate a log expression with base A, then what you have to do is, 1 over natural log of that log base times 1 over the log argument. Now listen, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use a chain rule and apply the chain rule to this because I remember the argument was more than just x. So I wonder if they have a little bit of an extended version of that. I don't think they do, but we know chain rule, so we will use that. And the example that we're going to do is very similar to example 6 part c okay because it's going to follow the same pattern as theorem 13 but it's going to tell us to use the chain rule so if you need to look at an extra example um example six part c is very close to what we are about to do and that's on page 247 so i'm going to go ahead and write down this formula on the on my on our notebook or you know on our paper and then we will use it okay Hold on, let me bring my iPad back. So, section 2.6, we looked at it, so I don't need that anymore. I'm going to go ahead and write down the formula for you. says that if you want to differentiate an expression that is log base A of X, then what do you have to do? You have to do 1 over natural log of that log base A times 1 over natural log of, I'm so, oh, oopsie daisy, <laughs> I don't need no, X, um, what's it called, natural log over there, it's just going to be 1 over x. So this is what theorem 13 is telling us to do from section 2.6. So I wanted to write that down on this paper so that we can use this, okay? And that's probably what makes this problem more difficult. Now, let's go back and I'll differentiate this product. 
So review a product rule that you guys know already from unit one. When you are differentiating a product of two functions, then it goes like this. First times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. So I like to lay out all my pieces on the side. I would like to say that if the first function is x to the sixth power, the orange one, right? This guy right there. The derivative of this is 6x to the fifth power. Okay? Now let's go and do this green one. See, that's the one, that's the hard one from this chapter. So I'll write down g is the original log base 5 of 2 minus a 2x minus x to the third. Now we're about to use that theorem this this in the red box to differentiate this g. Okay, g prime is now we start by writing one over natural log of the log base. So one over natural log of what number? Five. That's the log base. And then we're going to multiply this by 1 over the log argument, what's in the parenthesis, okay? So write down 1 over 2x minus x to the third power. But remember to multiply this by the derivative of this log argument. That's the chain rule piece. So let's multiply these two fractions by the derivative of 2x minus x to the third power. So what's that going to give us? That is going to give us 2, right? Because the derivative of 2x is just 2 minus, what is the derivative of x to the third power? 3x squared. And we just need to put this together as a single fraction, okay? So let's put this together as a single fraction. So on top of the fraction, I'll just have this. Okay, that's the only thing that will go to the top of the fraction. Two, ooh, whoopsie, not with the highlighter. 2 minus 3x squared. That's the only thing on the numerator. And in the bottom of the fraction, I'll just write these two next to each other, okay? Natural log, oh, natural log of 5. And we're multiplying that by 2 minus x to the third power. All right, I got all my pieces written down. Okay, for my product rule. So I'm ready to put these together like a Lego. All right. So um, f prime of x, sorry, um, the function is called f of x, but I am using f in two different ways here, right? I said f is the first piece of the multiplication, but I'm, when I say f of x, I'm just saying for the entire function, okay? Now, I have to do uh, first times, okay, to first times, and what's that? This right there, right? X to the six times. Derivative of the second. I'm going to be out of color soon, but derivative of the second, which is this mess right there that we have to find. So let's multiply that red one by this orange one, okay? Um, 2 minus 3x to the second on top of the fraction. And the bottom of the fraction had ln5 times 2 minus x to the third. This fraction so long. All right, plus. Now let's go do the g. Let's go do the g. g was... Um, the original log expression, that one right there. So I'll say log base 5, um, 2x minus x to the third, right? And we're multiplying this by what? f prime. f prime was this. So I'm just going to multiply that by 6x to the fifth power. Oh, I'm done. All right, if you can do that, you'll get most of the points on your exam. But 
Now it's about, you know, let's see if we can simplify this mess a little bit. Okay, it looks, it looks awful. Um, but you know what? Do we really have to simplify this? Yeah, it would be nice to, right? Um, there are different things I guess we can do. We can factor out the x to the fifth power and all, but <sighs> all right, it's ugly, right? <laughs> Or let's see what I can do. At least I can put that x to the 6th power on top of the fraction, right? Well, guys, there's really not a single right answer at this point. We, we can just simplify this however we like. Um, If you want to just make this a perfect... I don't know. I just, I'm just going to... I'm just going to write it as a fraction plus this term, okay? So, um, how about I do this? I will distribute this... Um. 6 to the x in, okay, I'll just multiply this here, all right, not a problem, I'll just write this as 2x to the 6 power, I don't think I really like to do that, you know, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to do that, I'll just leave it in a perfectly factored form, I'll just write x to the 6 power in the front, and 2 minus 3x squared, see what I did, I just put these two together next to each other, okay, and then in the bottom of the fraction is still natural log of 5, 2 minus x to the third power. Can't really simplify those. Okay, and then plus, and there's nothing much I can do about these two. I can just bring this monomial to the front and write 6x to the fifth power in the front and then write log base 5. 2x minus x to the third power. And no one is really telling us to put this as a single, you know, rational expression or anything like that. So honestly, guys, I'll just stop here. I think this looks fine. This looks just fine. So um, I think when I'm grading this problem on your exam, I will be looking for things like, does my student know um, this theorem, how to differentiate the log expression with base a and is she or he using or you know are they using the chain rule to find um the derivative of the sec uh, the, the, the the argument and are they multiplying it and then the correct use of product rule putting things all nicely but i really don't think i should you know focus so much on the simplifying part so i think that will be okay um if you want to stop there i think that looks great for number 10. so um that's that but i think there was another problem that i got an email about and i think that was number 14 so i'll go ahead and continue i will go over 14 in this video okay i'm gonna have to go download that though where are you number 14 um download number 14 hold on a second Here it is. So 14, it says, consider the function f of x equals 1,500 times 1 1.025 raised to the 2x power. They want us to find f prime of x. Hold on, let me erase this. Um, this is actually from that same section that we did. So what I want you to look up is Go to section 2.6 and figure out how to differentiate something like a to the x power. Okay, that's what you're going to have to know. Because look, the base of this exponential term is 1.025, a constant, and we're raising that to 2x power. So how do we differentiate something like that? So we'll need our textbook to look that formula up. Okay, because this test covers the entire chapter six. Or oh, about another email must be. I hope it's you. All right, so here it is: derivative of a to the x power. Okay, how do you do that? That is going to be natural log of the base a. Whoopsie, sorry. Natural log of the base a times the original exponential term of a to the x. Now. What if the exponent has more than just x? 
And if you look at example four, part C, it does give you something similar. What if the exponent is not just x, but 2x plus 1? How did they handle that? So you're going to, again, have to use a chain rule, okay? So look, for part C, you will have to use a chain rule to multiply that rule by the derivative of the exponent, okay? So we'll do this example together, but I wanted to point you to the theorem that we will need for this problem. That is theorem number 12 in section 2.6, and this is on page 245. We got to know all these rules so that we can apply on our exam. So natural log of a times the original term. So if you get an exponential term, okay, with base a, the derivative of that term will be natural log of a times the original term. So that is from theorem number 12 in section 2.6. But I want to remind you that we will have to use the chain rule when the exponent is more than just x. And that's what's happening over here. You see the exponent is not just x, but it's 2x. So we're going to do some chain rule for this one, okay? But we know what rule we need, so let's do number 14. You know what, guys? I should have been doing this with you since beginning. But, you know, it's exam two, so I think, I think it's good that we're doing some work together asynchronously. So what's that going to be? Um, this constant of 1500 will not make any difference, so you just, well, you know, imagine just pulling it out to the front. So we'll write this down first. 1500 is just there. But when you are uh, differentiating this term that I'm highlighting in red, we're applying that theorem 12, okay? So what do you have to write first? You have to write natural log of the base, okay? The base of this exponential term. So I'm multiplying 1500 by natural log of what number? 1.025. And what does the theorem tell us to multiply that by? We need to multiply this by the original term, a to the x, the itself, the red highlighted part itself. So multiply that by 1.025 to the 2x power. Now, if you do that much, I mean, it's almost perfect, but you remember when the exponent is more than just x, we have to multiply this expression by the derivative of the exponent. So chain roll it, okay? So what is the derivative of 2x? Well, that's gonna be just two. So that's where this random two came from. This is the derivative of the exponent 2x, okay? Alrighty, let's multiply or simplify this um, as a single term. F prime of x equals let me highlight all the constants, okay? This is a single number. That's just a number. That's just another single number, right? It's just an ugly number, but that's a number, and that's another number. So um, I guess we can give a decimal answer by multiplying these three orange highlighted numbers. But if I want to be super accurate, I can just write this as 1,500 times 2 will give me 3,000. So I'll say 3,000 natural log of 1.025. Okay, that is a coefficient of this function. And that is getting multiplied by the exponential term of 1.025 raised to the 2x power. If you want to know what the decimal version looks like, we can use a calculator real quick, okay? Desmo Scientific. So I can type in 3000 times natural log of 1.025. So our new coefficient is about 74. That's about 74. So that's what this... um orange part is guys it looks bad but it's just a number so this is approximately 
74.74 times 1.025 raised to the 2x power, okay? Either are fine for me. I mean, I will know if you just convert it into an approximation. There's no restriction on giving me the exact answer and I'm grading it, so I'll be okay with this. So if prime of x is approximately that, so we found part A. Now what do they want for part B? Does the function have horizontal tangent line at any x value? Um, well, you know how to find horizontal tangent from the first unit test. I saw that. So to find if uh, a graph has a horizontal tangent, now first of all, if you think about a horizontal line, okay, horizontal line, the slope is zero, right? Slope is zero. A flat line, if you imagine a flat line, a horizontal line, the slope is zero. And guess what slope is? Slope is the derivative. So what you want to do here is to see um, if any x value will give us, and now I'm doing part B, set this derivative equal to zero set this f prime of x equal to zero and see if any x value can make that true because um, that's when the slope will be zero and when slope is zero we're looking at a horizontal line horizontal tangent line so let's set this i'm just going to go with the approximation okay i will say 74 times 1.025 to the 2x power. I'm going to set that equal to 0. And let us solve this equation to see if it's solvable. First of all, I will divide both sides by 74. If I divide both sides by 74, I'll get 1.025 to the 2x power equals 0. Okay? All right, now. We can take natural log of both sides to bring down this exponent. That's how you solve any exponential equations, right? So I'm going to take natural log of the left side, 1.025 to the 2x power. And then I will take, uh-oh, you don't see a uh-oh. Is that okay? Can you take natural log of zero? What is this? Okay, that's something fine. That doesn't exist. So take a look. When I was trying my best to solve this equation that was set equal to zero, you know, I was asking a question like this. Can I raise 1.025 to on any power and actually make it a zero? Can you start by multiplying something by itself so many times and make it zero? No. Well, we'll know the answer is no once you type in natural log of zero. Natural log of zero is undefined. That's a no-no. So what we just found out, I'll go ahead and say, and I do want you to give me that reasoning on your exam. This is undefined. Okay, so what, what, how do we write up the conclusion, okay? They were asking a question. Does the function have a horizontal tangent line at any x value? Our answer is going to be no. f has, f of x has no horizontal tangent line. At any x value. And what's the reason? How do we know this is true? Because f prime of x is never zero. Well, you know what f prime of x is, slope of a tangent line. Something like that. Okay. We set the derivative equal to zero and we were trying to solve for an x value and we found out that equation cannot be solved.
So the derivative will never be equal to zero, which means no tangent line will ever have a slope of zero. So there is no horizontal tangent. Okay. So that's the conclusion for part B. Okay. So that's how you would do them. And I know when you're taking your test, because the test is, you know, time, you're probably doing this thinking so much faster. But I wanted to you know, just kind of slow down, talk about where I'm getting all these formulas from, you know, talk about my reasoning to go over those two. So that was number 10 and number 14 in this video. I'm going to stop and probably just going to wait for a couple more emails. But if you want to send me some like specific questions, I'll make sure to go over them today. Okay.